My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UI path and in particular browser automation. Find the course materials by clicking the link in the description below. Browsers. We often want to automate in browsers, so click the browsers lesson. Here we will need to open up a browser with this URL. Then we need to do a login and this is just a test page, but it could be any web page. It will be the same activities that we want to use. The login is here, Tom Smith. So we use that one and we use the super secret password like this and then we click login. Here we have the secure area and if we look, we need to take a screenshot of that secure area. That's it. So let's create that in UiPath. Let me close down this one here and only have the lessons open. So I go to UiPath and then I'll say new sequence. I'll say browsers. The first thing that I'll need to do is to open up a browser. So open browser here and drag it in. I'll need to use a URL and the URL, it was just this one here. So I'll right click in the lesson and I click copy link address. Go back to UiPath. As you now know, we don't use hard coded in here. We use a variable. So we go down to variable, say str URL. Then in the default, I'll put in quotation marks and I'll paste in the address. Go down to the URL field. I'll say str URL. Now we are using the value of this variable and we'll open up a browser. Let's see how that is happening. So I run the file like here. We will open up a browser and that will be Internet Explorer. That is because Internet Explorer is default and there's a good reason for that. Internet Explorer is often installed on all servers and we cannot be sure that Chrome is or Firefox for that matter. So right now we installed it, we open up Internet Explorer. So we can go up here to the browser type, then we can say Chrome. Now we will open up the address in Chrome. So let me run the robot again. This is the Internet Explorer. Here you can see that, oh, you couldn't see that, but we have it opened here in the uh, Chrome. Let me close down this one and let me close down the Internet Explorer. Because now we opened up the browser. Then we just, in quotation marks, need to log in. So let me actually run it again because I need to have it open so I need to know where I can log in. I could of course also have typed in the address but it's more easy to simply just have the robot doing so. Because now I will need to have this username so I'll go back to UiPath and yes you have guessed it right we create variables so str user like here in quotation marks paste in the user. We can also create a password, str, pass, then go back to the browser to get the password that is here, like this. Back again to UiPath, quotation marks, paste it in. So to do the login, we will simply just do a type into. So in activities, find a type into and drag it in. We will have one for the user and one for the password. We will indicate where we want to type in the user. That will be in this box. You can see the yellow ones around it here. What do we want to type in? Well, we have a variable for that now, str user. We can also do it here in the password, str pass. Remember, we call it that, so str pass. We will create these two exactly the same way. Here we can have the type into input a password, input username. Well, that's fine for now. You could argue that you might want to change the name. I'll let, leave that up to you. So now we have filled in these two things. We want to click the login, like here, drag in a click, indicate where we want to click. I want to click the login. Well, it doesn't matter if you click the whole button or just in here. It's This is a sub element of this, but I'll just take the big one like this. So now here you can change it to click login like this. This one will lock us into the area. We can try to run it. So let me close down the Google Chrome with the internet login on and run the robot. So I run the robot. Hey friend, is this video helping you? Then please give it a thumbs up. That will not only improve my reach, but help me a ton. It's here. 
we can see that we now type in the username, the password, we click login. And what you didn't see was that we are in the secure area. Now we just need to take a screenshot of this area. And where do we want to place the screenshot? Well, go to our lesson folder where you downloaded your files, click in it. Let's make a new folder here. Just right click, say browser like this and shift right click on this folder, copy as path because we'll need to know where the screenshot should be placed. So we go back to UI path. Now, after we click locked in, find a take screenshot here and simply just drag it in. We need to say, where do we want to make the screenshot? And let me have it here. We want to have the screenshot in this browser. So we simply just indicate it. And what do we want to have a screenshot of? Well, let's just take the whole browser like this. So now we take a screenshot and let us change this as we know this is best practice. So we'll say login area like this. So now we have the screenshot and we will store it into a variable. So go over to the output and here you might not know what kind of variable this is. It might be easy when we have the data tables, you know that it was data table when we work with that, but here, well, no clue. Then do the easy thing. Just press control K and we can just call it screenshot. Here we don't have a prefix yet because we don't know what kind of variable it is. So I'll just click create. Then we can go down to variables. We can see our screenshot here and we can see that it is of the type image. Well, then we simply just add the prefix from here, EMG screenshot. Isn't that clever? So now we created this variable and we stored in the screenshot in it. Then we need to save it to our folder. So I will go over here and find a save image like here and drag it in. We'll need an image. That was this variable from up here. It was called IMG screenshot. So we type that in here and then we want a file name. The file name, well, we make a variable for our folder first. That was the one we copied from out here. So we click down here, create variable str folder. This is of the kind string. We go over here and simply just paste it in. This was our main folder. So what we do here is that we can now say str folder, but we also need to give it a name and to do so we will say plus. This one is good. It will teach you to work with folders and files as well. Quotation marks, then a backward slash. We can just call it screenshot and then PNG like this. So this one will work or that might be a little challenge in here for you. Let's see. So let me close down the internet uh, browser again, the Chrome and run it. Here we log in, click log in like this. The robot finished. Let's look at our screenshot. So we go into the browser, take the screenshot and we have this. If by some way you could have a screenshot where you're still at your login screen. And that is because what's happening here is that we click log in and then we take the screenshot. So you might want to have a little bit of delay here. That's how we sometimes need to use a little workaround. So that's it. I will ask you for one favor. Will you give me feedback here in the comment section? That is below the video you're just watching. Simply just type in a comment with your, maybe your name and then some feedback for the course. It will help me in getting better at making courses, but it will also improve my reach. And that is always good because then I can make more courses. I'll have more time for that. So let's do that. And what you'll do here is that we will create a variable for the feedback. Again, you don't need to post it. Then we'll just uh, create the flow without clicking enter. So you're not posting anything, but we'll say str feedback, and then simply just type in your feedback here in quotation marks. That could be, Hey, Anas. Well, this is Anas from Denmark. I think your course is great but please fix your rooms. I'm not shy, so give me anything, any feedback 
you can think of. Of course, I also like the good ones. Then I'll say kind regards, Anas. What we need to do here is that we will need to send this feedback to the comment section. Because we are working here in a browser, so let me minimize this. Here we have it, we don't need this anymore, we created that, so we just right click here, we disable the activity, and again, minimize it. So now we want to make a comment to the comment section here, to the videos that you are watching, that is here. And we just need to, because the browser is open, you're watching the video, I know that, otherwise you couldn't hear me now. Then we just need to attach that browser. So we'll find a attach browser here and drag it in, either below or in front, that doesn't matter. Then we indicate the browser, that is this browser here, and now we can do some operations in it. We want to type in the feedback. Again, we just don't click enter if you're not comfortable in typing in this thing. There's no pressure from here. I'm happy that you're just watching this video. Then we click indicate. We'll indicate this comment section like this. Maybe give it a better name. So I'll say comment and then put in the feedback that we just made but there's a built-in challenge here. So if I press control space, we can find the feedback variable. Well, that's something you often see. That is because you define it in another scope and then it's not visible here, it's gone. Well, it's not gone, we just need to change the scope. So we find it, we created it in here in the open browser. Then in this do, now we can go down to variables and it's here, but it's only defined in this scope and we need to use it in the other scope. So simply just take the browsers like this and then close down the variable manager. Again, collapse this and now we can choose it from here. str feedback like this. And to post it again, don't do it if you don't want to. There's no pressure from here, but to post it, we need a click activity. So click like here. Then we go back here. And what do we want to click? We want to click the comment button, but we can't right now because it's gray out, but whenever we write, we can click it. So write something, then click indicate and indicate the comment one like this. Now there's one challenge and this is one was a great thing that I can show you now because there's something in it or at least right now. And that could be a workflow where we have something in a field then we can simply just go to properties and click empty field. This one will empty the field. Let's try to run the robot. So now we will empty the field and then we will type in the feedback and then click comment. Like this, if we go back to our browser, we have now posted feedback to the video. Thanks a lot if you did this and thanks a lot if you're just watching it. Do you like this lesson? Then take the entire course by clicking on the video to the left. Or click the video to the right and upgrade your career with tips and tricks from the leading RPA recruiter.